hope you all had a good school week. And if you are already on spring break, we hope you're having an awesome time. Today, we're going into our second sermon from our Easter egg sermon series. Carissa, do you remember what we learned about last Sunday? Yeah. We learned that Jesus was the coming king as he famously entered the city of Jerusalem. He came in as a king to conquer sin so that everyone's sin would be forgiven. Awesome, Carissa. But did you know that Jesus wants us to be the king of our lives as well? Jesus wants us to dedicate our lives to him and let him be the driver's seat of our heart. So that everything we do would please him? That's right. But it's easier said than done, because sometimes we just like to focus all on ourselves. Just like the Bible story in today's sermon. Jesus had 12 disciples who followed him and dedicated their lives to him. But one of them was a bad egg, because he only thought about himself. Here, little eggs, let's see if you can tell between a good egg and a bad egg. that our cousins are coming in town this weekend. And they plan that we'll go to the amusement park on Sunday. I'm so looking forward to going on that roller coaster. Woo! I can't wait and it's gonna be so fun. Wait, hold on, Krista. Sunday is the day we sit aside to worship Jesus. We can't just have fun at the music park all day. Of course not. That's why I've already planned to put Jesus first by watching our church's worship videos first thing on Sunday morning before we do anything else. I've also invited our cousins to join us to watch it so they have a good opportunity to learn about Jesus. Great planning, Carissa. And then we can follow up with them later on in the day and ask them about what they think about Jesus. Great job, Chris. So little eggs, was Carissa an example of a good egg or a bad egg? Carissa knew that her Sunday would be busy, so she put Jesus first by setting aside time in the morning to worship him first. Yep, that's what it means to let Jesus be king in our heart. All right, little eggs, let's take a look at our next example. Hey, Carissa, here's one dollar that mom is giving you for offering for today at church. All right, thanks, Prima. What if I didn't offer my offering money to Jesus and kept it all for myself? And if I keep doing this week after week, then maybe one day I would become a millionaire. <laughs> Carissa, are you okay? Uh, yep, uh, feeling healthy. I, I, I mean feeling healthy. So little eggs, was Carissa an example of a good egg or a bad egg? A very, very bad rotten egg. <laughs> Carissa plans to keep all the offering money to herself. The money was supposed to be offerings for Jesus, but she wanted them all so that one day she'd become a millionaire. Yep, she was only thinking about herself. She only thought about what she wanted. That's right. And this is exactly what happened to one of Jesus' disciples. His name was Judas Iscariot. He also thought of only himself when he betrayed Jesus. Jesus wants us to be all good little eggs. He doesn't want us to be anything to let us come through between him and us. Jesus wants us to give our hearts to him so that nothing comes first ahead of our Savior. And we are going to learn more about this during our sermon time. Today, Teacher King will be teaching us, so let's give our full attention. Hello boys and girls, Teacher King here. Last week, Teacher Ricky had a lot of egg, 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 ecstatic, excellent discussion, and he talked about how Jesus came to save us and save us from our sins. Well, today, Teacher King is going to be talking about Sermon 2 about the bad egg. So. Easter is coming. What is Easter all about? Is it all about the Easter Bunny? No. Eggs are a big part of how we celebrate Easter. Eggs represent new life. Teacher King likes eggs because, you know, eggs 
have a lot of protein, it's really good for you, it's a great breakfast meal to get your start day started. Well, eggs represent new life, and Easter is all about how Jesus came to give us new life. But while the love of Jesus is eternal and never fades, we all know that eggs have a shelf life. Chocolate eggs will eventually go bad. And long before they go bad, the real eggs will go bad. But how do you tell when an egg has gone bad? The first thing to do is check the packages. Teacher King recently got eggs from Amazon. It's very convenient. But it says right here, sell by April 8th. Ooh, very cool. So you can check how the eggs go bad or when they go bad by looking at the package. The expiration, I mean the expiration date tells us the last date the grocery store is allowed to try and sell those eggs. That doesn't mean the eggs are bad after that date, but it does mean we better cook them and eat them in a hurry. I'm sure you've all had experience eating bad food. It's not a pleasant experience. But you know how sick spoiled food can make you. A bad egg will not only look and smell bad, it will make you really sick. We're talking about bad eggs today because out of the dozen people that Jesus recruited to be his disciples, there was a bad egg. His name was Judas, and he is a man who betrayed Jesus. He heard all the same sermons they heard. He saw how Jesus loved everyone, including the sick and the disabled and the needy. Yet while the other 11 loved Jesus and dedicated their lives to him, Judas was always thinking of himself and money. As the keeper of the money of the group, Judas was known to always take a little for himself. When a woman generously sacrificed a jar of perfume to anoint the feet of Jesus, all Judas could see was money thrown down the drain. Judas was a bad egg. Not because he was a bad person, but because he put his love of profit ahead of love of Jesus. Maybe that's why Judas took the opportunity to cash in on his friendship with Jesus. Judas knew that there were men who wanted to hurt Jesus. He knew they were afraid to seize Jesus in the daytime because Jesus was so popular. But if they could grab him after dark, they could then spin the story that Jesus had broken the law and deserved to die. Now, John John will help us read Luke 22, 1 through 6, 45 and 52. Take it away. Sometime before Jesus took his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane, Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' twelve disciples, went to the chief priests and asked them, What are you willing to give me if I deliver Jesus over to you? They paid Judas thirty silver coins to carry out this deed. From then on, Judas was watching for an opportunity to hand over Jesus. After he had finished praying, Jesus was speaking to his disciples, Peter, James, and John, when he saw Judas approaching with a large crowd following behind. The chief priests and the elders had sent the crowd armed with swords and clubs. Because the people in the crowd did not know what Jesus looked like, Judas arranged a signal so that they would know which person to arrest. Judas said, the one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. When Judas arrived at the garden, he walked right up to Jesus, said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus looked at Judas and said, Do what do you come for, friend? Then the men in the crowd stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. One of the disciples who came to pray with Jesus in the garden saw what was happening. So he drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Jesus told his disciple to put his sword away and explained that everything was happening just as it was supposed to and just as it should. 
Do you think I cannot call on my father to save me from this? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? Jesus then turned to those in the angry crowd and said, I am leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching and you did not arrest me. All of this is happening so that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. As it became clear that Jesus was going to be taken to the chief priests, Jesus' disciples fled in fear of being punished along with him. They abandoned Jesus, leaving him alone to face the suffering he would endure to save the world from its sin. Judas sold Jesus out. He told the men who hated Jesus where they could find him and arrest him with very little resistance. For 30 pieces of silver, Judas led these men and a trope of soldiers to a quiet garden. While the other disciples slept, too tired to stay awake, they entered the garden and grabbed Jesus. They dragged him away and put him on trial. Judas soon regretted his decision. He even tried to return the money, but that didn't take away the pain of what he had done. Judas had made the worst mistake anyone can ever make. Judas chose to put his hope into something else beside Jesus. And rather than becoming rich, he only came to ruin. Judas' tragic end is a stark reminder that when we fail to put Jesus first, our plans will come to a bad end. Did Jesus know Judas was a bad egg? Of course he did. Jesus even called Judas out the night Judas betrayed him. He let Judas go and bring the authorities to arrest him because it was part of God's plan. I don't think Jesus kept Judas around just for that moment, however. I genuinely believe that Jesus loved Judas. He loved all the bad eggs in this world, no matter how rotten, and he's willing to forgive them if they will put their own desires aside and put Jesus first. It's a shame Judas didn't live long enough to see Jesus rise from the grave. If he had lived until Sunday, I have no doubt Judas could have had a different ending. He could have found forgiveness. He could have been filled with the Holy Spirit. He could have gone out into the world and preached the gospel, dying a martyr's death like most of his fellow disciples. Instead, Judas' death stands as a stark reminder that if we put our plans apart from God, they will only lead to a bad end. We all have days when we put other things ahead of God. We are all bad eggs, to one degree or another because of our sin. The good news is, Jesus can forgive even the worst of sinners. He forgave a thief hanging next to him on the cross. He forgave Peter, who denied knowing him three times. Jesus could have forgiven Judas for betraying him and selling him out. And no matter what sin you may have in your life, Jesus can and will forgive you. God has a better plan for all of us. He wants us to put aside our selfish desires and anything that hinders us from knowing Jesus. He wants us to put Jesus first. Jesus can make a bad egg good again. He can forgive us and set us to the right path. If you're ready to put Jesus first today, this is your invitation to have your sins forgiven and become one of the good eggs. Let us pray. Dear Father, Lord, I pray that this message speak out to each and every one of us. Lord, we know that each and every one of us have sin. We have a bad egg within us. If we want to take this time, Lord, and really give you our sins so that you can forgive us, Lord, I pray that we will make this decision today and be able to come to you, Lord, so we can turn around our life to be able to accept you into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, little eggs, thanks for worshiping with us today. We hope you all would have a wonderful week. See, See you, you all next, next Sunday. Sunday. Bye!
are worshiping with us today. We hope you all would have a wonderful week. See you all next week. <laughs> all right, little eggs. Thanks for worshiping with us today. We hope you all would have. All right, little eggs. Thanks for worshiping us with this. All right, little eggs. Thanks for worshiping us today. <laughs> all right, little eggs. Thanks for worshiping your sick. I can't <laughs> say it! <laughs> all right, little eggs. Thanks for worshiping with us today. We hope you all would have a wonderful week. See, See you all next Sunday! Sunday.